Hello, and welcome to video lesson 20 on thin-walled pressure vessels. Our learning objectives for this lesson are to derive formulas for stresses in cylindrical and spherical pressure vessels. Uh, these are uh, going to be thin-walled pressure vessels, not uh, the general case uh, where uh, walls are thicker than an R to T ratio of uh, 10 to 1. Uh, and we're going to calculate stresses in thin-walled pressure vessels. So for this uh, lesson, you should read Beer and Johnston, section 7.6. So for spherical pressure vessels, they are thin-walled. Uh, we're considering them thin-walled if ratio of the radius to the wall thickness is greater than or equal to 10. If it's less than 10, we wouldn't want to apply these solutions to that case, but for this particular problem, it's perfectly fine to do so uh, if uh, the radius is uh, more than 10 times the thickness. So let's take a look at the case of the spherical pressure vessel. I've shown a spherical vessel with half of the vessel cut away, and P is going to act on the projected area of the surface uh, as the internal gauge pressure, and sigma is the stress that's in the wall. And typically we would know P and want to calculate sigma, or we might know uh, what the allowable stress is, and we might want to figure out what the thickness of the wall is. Um, so P, R, T, and sigma are the four important variables in our problem. So if I was to do statics on the cross section, and I was to do static equilibrium, uh, I, would I would need to sum the forces in the horizontal direction, so the things pushing into uh, the projected area and the things pulling on the projected area uh, and I would need to write an equilibrium equation if I did that I would be able to come up with a relationship between Sigma P R and T so the force resultant of this blue pressure distribution that's going to push on the cut section is uh, pi r squared, which is the area, times p, which is the pressure, and that's going to give me something in units of force per, uh, force per area times um, area. And I'll be left ultimately with force over here. Uh, then I would have uh, to figure out what uh, the resultant of the red stress is in the wall, and that would be equal to the circumference of this cut section times the thickness, so 2 pi r times t, that would give me the area times sigma, which is the stress that's in the wall. So I have an r and a t, that gives me a unit of area, sigma is force per area, so I end up with a force over here, so the force that's pushing on the cut section should be balanced by the force in the walls, and when I solve for sigma, I find that sigma is equal to PR over 2T. Now, if I was to take a look at the sphere, every point on the sphere, if I drew a rectangle in any orientation at all that I wanted, because I could pick any great circle that passes through any point, I'd have the same analysis I would have tension of PR over 2T in all the same directions. So it's going to happen that uh, PR over 2T is a principal stress for this uh, particular case. Uh, in fact, it's going to be two of your principal stresses and uh, the third principal stress would be um, would be zero. And this would be a plain stress situation. Now let's take a look at cylindrical pressure vessels, uh, which is a similar kind of problem, but we have uh, a different geometry. However, the approach that we're going to take is very similar. 
We're going to take our cylindrical pressure vessel and I'm going to cut it in half. And this is looking down the circular end of the, uh, the cylinder. So we cut it straight down the middle uh, through the cylinder, take half of the cylinder, and we've got a pressure distribution inside the cylinder that's uh, of magnitude P. Sigma is our hoop stress. Uh, so I would have sigma uh, in the walls. And if I take a look at a 90 degree rotation and I'm looking uh, into that cut section, the pressure is going to push the cut section out. The wall tension is going to hold the section together. And these tensions right here are much like uh, the stresses that you would have if you imagined one of those barrels in the Old West that was made out of boards and uh, those boards were held in place by hoops and you put a lot of pressure into the, uh, into the tank or the barrel that was held together by metal hoops and uh, these would be called hoop stresses much like the hoops in, that would be holding the barrel together. So you would be uh, stretching the hoops out as you add more pressure here. So once again, I can take a look at the summation of the forces in the horizontal direction and set them equal to zero. So the horizontal resultant of the pressure would be P times 2R, which is the uh, diameter of the inside of the pipe. Uh, times L, which would be a segment of length of the pipe. And then this, uh, the stress resultant in the walls would be 2L, because I've got two sections, they're L long, and then they're both T thick, times sigma. So when I equate these two and simplify, I end up with a equation for the hoop stress, that says sigma equals PR over T. Longitudinal stress would develop by pressure being exerted on a circular projected area. So the longitudinal stress sigma is equal to PR over 2T. So that's the same solution that we had for the spherical case. And if I was to take a look at a cylindrical vessel that had closed ends, you would see that you'd have uh, PR over 2T pulling in the longitudinal direction and PR over T pulling in the hoop direction. So hoop stresses are twice the magnitude of the long longitudinal stresses. Thus the hot dog is always going to split along its length uh, because the hoop stresses are greater and that's what's going to cause the the skin that's holding the hot dog together to fail when you overcook a hot dog. So let's do finally an example of how we would calculate stresses and, and use um, uh, the, the formulas that we've developed. So uh, for our example, a cylindrical pressure vessel has an inner radius of two meters and a, and a thickness of three centimeters. We'd like to determine the maximum pressure the vessel can sustain if the hoop or circumferential stress must not exceed 120 megapascals. So we know that we're interested in the hoop stress, so we're gonna use the hoop stress formula, sigma equals PR over T. Solving this for P, we end up with P equals sigma T over R. We're gonna plug in the maximum stress that we can have for sigma because that's going to give us the maximum pressure. And then T is 0 0.3 meters or three centimeters. And then our radius is two meters. So that gives us a maximum pressure that the vessel can carry of 1.8 megapascals. That's all for lesson number 20.